everyone, Tim Wright here. Welcome back to the Worship of Community of Grace coming to you on Facebook, YouTube. Glad to have you with us today. Hugh Jackman, or as Diane refers to him, the beautiful Hugh Jackman, uh, is a famous actor. And maybe you know him from his role as Wolverine in the X-Men, or maybe Jean Valjean in Les Mis, or a host of other movies. But even though Hugh Jackman is a famous actor and seems all put together, he carries a wound. When he was eight years old, his mother abandoned the family, leaving him, his siblings, and his father. And Hugh said that once he realized that his mom was gone for good, he was afraid to be alone in the house. He said it this way, I was terrified because I was the first one home every day. I used to walk home from school and wait outside. I just wouldn't go in. He talked about his dad at that time. His dad, of course, experiencing his own wound and now left with all these children to care for. And his dad did the best he can. But one thing that stood out for Hugh was that his dad could only attend one sporting event per child per year. And again, his dad did the best he could, but life was so chaotic. There was so much pain. And Hugh just talked about how much it meant to have his dad there for that game every year, but he wished he could have been there more often. And so now he's a successful actor, seems to have his life together, but that wound continues to play a role in his life. And it shows itself occasionally in the form of fear, in the form of anxiety, and this obsessive need to have people like him. Now, he's not the only one, of course, who is walking around with a wound. To be human is to be wounded. Every single one of us throughout our lives are going to experience some wounding. We're going to go through periods of trauma. It might be caused by abandonment or rejection or betrayal or bullying or abuse or failure or criticism. There are all kinds of things that can wound us or cause trauma. Some of those wounds fade quickly. Some of those wounds actually build resilience in us, make us tougher people. But some of those wounds, like the one that Hugh Jackman has, keeps popping up, keep popping up over and over again, oozing pain and oozing hurt. To be human is to be wounded. Now, over the last several years, we have been through a collective period of trauma. The word trauma, by the way, means wound. And the dictionary definition of trauma is this, a disordered psychic or behavioral state resulting from severe mental or emotional stress or physical injury. So think about what we've been through these last few years, and we've talked about that throughout this series on how can I get my life back, but we went through COVID, lockdown, fights over masks and vaccines, political turmoil, shootings, the war in Ukraine, uh, a challenging uh, financial time. We've been through all of this together. And when you heap that trauma on the wounds that many of us already carry, there are many of us today who are walking wounded. We're living in pain constantly, and we're afraid that that pain is beginning to define our lives and to define it with grief, shame, guilt, anxiety, the inability to love and to be loved. To be human is to be wounded. But sometimes those wounds dehumanize us. Now, the Christian story has something unique to say to us about wounds and about trauma. The Christian story tells us that God, the creator of the universe, entered into our woundedness in the person of Jesus on the cross. On the cross, Jesus experienced physical woundedness, emotional trauma. And it all really began hours earlier in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus, in a time of prayer, was anticipating the cross, the trauma he would go through, and Luke's gospel tells us he began to sweat drops of blood. He was so traumatized. He was in such shock. And so for hours, Jesus hung on that cross, physically wounded, emotionally wounded, feeling abandoned by God, rejected by the people of Israel, and on that cross, took on the weight of the world, literally. All of our 
grief, all of our shame, our woundedness, our sin, Jesus took all of it and absorbed it into himself. The Christian story tells us that God in the person of Jesus knows what it's like to be wounded. But then three days later, something surprising happened. Jesus appeared to his disciples again alive. And as shocking as that was, maybe just as surprising was that the risen Jesus still had the physical wounds from the cross. You would think that a resurrected body would be perfect, no scars. And yet Jesus still bore the wounds. And it's those visible wounds in the resurrected body of Jesus that give us hope. First of all, they remind us that God has entered into our woundedness, that God is a wounded God, that God gets us. They remind us that our wounds are a part of our human story. To be human is to be wounded. But more profoundly, they let us know that our wounds no longer need to define our lives. That Jesus comes to redefine those wounds. He transforms them from moments of shame and brokenness into signs of his grace. The wounds don't go away. The scars are still there, but the hurt, the pain, in that deep pain, Jesus meets us with deep healing grace and transforms our wounds so that they are no longer the defining moments of our life, but they are moments of God's grace in our lives. In the words of the great hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, says it this way, Crown Him the Lord of love. Behold His hands and side. Rich wounds, yet visible above, in beauty glorified. No angel in the sky can fully bear that sight, but downward bends his burning eye at mysteries so bright. The word kintsugi is a Japanese word, and it means golden repair. And it refers to an art, a form of art, where the artist will take the broken pieces of pottery and put it back together. And they'll do that using lacquer, and then they will sprinkle gold dust onto the restored pottery, and that dust will adhere to all of the cracks in the pottery, making them stand out with bright gold. And the reason for doing that is because they want to say that the cracks in the pottery are a part of the pottery's story, that these cracks, these wounds aren't meant to be hidden or run from, but embraced as a part of the story of life. Jesus is the master Kintsugi artist. And as the wounded Savior, Jesus comes to us, and he takes those broken lives, uh, broken pieces of our lives, he puts us back together, he takes the wounds, and he heals the hurt. The wounds remain, but he sprinkles that gold dust of grace onto them so that they are reminders now of the grace and healing of the wounded Savior. Psalm 34 says, if you're brokenhearted, God is there. And so today, for those of you who are walking wounded, the wounded Savior, Jesus, comes to you. He meets you at your deepest point of pain, and he speaks life to you and transforms those wounds from moments of shame into signs of his grace for you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray for all of my friends watching today, the people that you love who are wounded. And no matter how deep that wound is, we pray that your grace would go even deeper. And so may the healing hands, the wounded healing hands of Jesus, touch those wounded areas of our lives and bring grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. your fault, still your love fought for me. You have been so, so good to me. When I felt no worth, you 
On the night which is betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Eat this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink and said, This is my blood. It's been poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Drink this for the remembrance of me. Let's pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained minister of the gospel, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As you eat this wafer, as you eat the cracker, the piece of bread that you might have, this is the body of Christ and is given and wounded for you. And then as you drink the wine or the grape juice, this is the blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you unto everlasting life. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, again, I want to thank you for worshiping with us today. And if this is your first time joining us online, thank you so much. And uh, we'd love to invite you to be a part of our family, either online or in-house. Uh, we want to say thanks for joining us. So if you text the word NEW to 623-295-2484, we're going to send you a card to Starbucks as our way of saying thanks for joining us today. 623-295-2484. Text the word NEW for that Starbucks card. If you text the word PRAYER to that number, we will pray for you this week. And if you'd like to know more about what's happening here, uh, a lot of things happening now as we start moving into the Christmas season. Uh, we encourage you to type the word EVENTS and or text the word EVENTS and send that to that number. And then we're going to follow up with you and send you a link to all the things that will be happening both online and in-house as we move into this Thanksgiving and Christmas season. 
Uh, that's also the number that you can use to support the mission and ministry of Community of Grace as we continue our adventure of bringing grace to the world. And if you believe in what we're doing in terms of reaching out to the community around us, uh, supporting those in need, uh, whether it's feeding people at St. John's, uh, their food bank, or it's uh, helping out our friends at Lake Pleasant Mobile Home Park Estates, or our good friends in Rwanda. Uh, if you want to be a part of that, well, you can text a gift to 623-295-2484. Uh, in the message, you just type in how much you'd like to give and, and hit send. You can also uh, text or uh, hold up your phone right there. There it is. You turn your phone on, and you turn the camera on. You hold it up to that QR code. It will take you to some links that you can fill out, and you can give that way as well. Uh, we've got one more song for you. Before we get to it, though, a couple things we want you to know about. Next weekend, we're going to wrap up our series, How Can I Get My Life Back? And we're going to look at the issue of being overly tired. We're not getting enough sleep. We're running too fast. And we're exhausted. So we're going to talk about that next week. Uh, we come to you every Saturday night, 5 o'clock online on Facebook and on YouTube. And, of course, we meet regularly every Sunday at 9 and at 1030 and then in between those two services, we have uh, our kids club, our Sunday school, and uh, youth meets after the service. Uh, the following week, by the way, we're starting a brand new series. This one is, How Can I Get My Life Back? The next one will be, How Do I Make My Life Count? And we'll be talking more about that next week. If you'd like to learn anything more about Bold Reckless uh, or about Community of Grace, you just go to boldrecklessgrace.org slash events, and that will give you all the stuff on how you can be involved here and the good things coming on up. And so now as you go, may our loving Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face smile upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord always turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Have a great week. Go bold and live grace. Well, good morning, everybody. Please stand up and help us sing today.